Welcome to this workshop on hourglass control. And you're going to find the, the starting point under workshops, workshop 2, hourglass control. And there's two file folders. We give you the final state, and then we have a start. We're going to go to start, and this is the file that we want. And this is the Dyna file ready to go. And we can drag it from the file folder onto our LS prepost icon. And it'll come up. And I need to move the model around. To do that, I'm going to hold the control key down and the left mouse button. And that moves it in outline mode. If I hold the shift key down and move the left, left mouse button, I get this. If I shift key is down, right mouse button is zoom, and middle mouse button is pan. So again, you can do it either control for an outline or shift for see the full model. And then it's left to rotate middle mouse button to pan, right mouse button to zoom. So that, it's a, and of course there's other little controls. If you go down here you can bring up this one here and go front and go back. That doesn't really get right. <laughs> I know one of them is going to work for us. Left, top. It took a little while but okay. So here is our model. It's very simple. If we go into section, shell, double click, the standard element formulation is a standard default, Bellesco to say. And it's a one point integration rule, uh, very, very basic, very fast, very efficient. Under control, we have the default hourglass set at this point, and uh, everything else is normal. We're just going to go a test of hourglass control. And we don't want to get too deep at this time because the purpose of these initial ones is just to run the program. So I'm going to go. I'm going to keep this around. I'm going to open up the LS Dynat Program Manager, and I'm going to solve it. Browse, and now it's got to go back up. Workshop two, start, Hourglass DYN. And I'm just going to hit run. It runs normal termination. Everything's fine. And now I'm going to go. Uh, you can open up multiple sessions of LS Prepost. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. It's a binary file we want to look at. It remembers, well, if you open it, sometimes it'll remember Hourglass Start. These are all the files. These are the the child files of the D3 plot. If you open up the top one, D3 plot, it will open up everything else in the whole list. Control key, rotate around, and we'll just hit the run thing here. And it's deforming. And if we wanted to see what the stresses look like, you could hit this button here in the von Mises. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's that button up here in the corner right there, fringe component. And you can see the first, or I could, now that I know which, which one here to hit, I'll just hit top. <laughs> and, and you can see the stress pattern. But really to, to look at hourglassing, it's better not to turn on the stresses. Um, there we go. And that is the classic hourglass sh shape because when you have one point integration, um, the element can move like this with zero energy. It's the same energy state, whether this goes out and this goes in. It's one of those those shapes where if you had normal Gaussian integration, um, th this shape would naturally, normally create energy. So um, this is the classic indication. Okay, and also let's see in our history variables if we look at the ASCII file folders here. And we can look in the GSAT file. We'll load this. Okay. We can look at the hourglass energy because we told it that we wanted to plot the hourglass. And you can see it swoops up like there as it starts to <laughs> starts to go crazy. And the standard thing to look at is the internal energy of the part against the hourglass energy. So you just hold these two down. This. Now you hold the excuse me, hold the control key down. And then you can select multiple items. So we want to just do internal and hourglass. 
And this is where you go, this is bad. <laughs> Our hourglass is three, and we have uh, close to point six or seven. Ideally, you want no more than 10% hourglass energy. So we have, and, and that, so people would say, well, look, I just don't want to look at it. Um, you can look at plot internal and hourglass energy to give you that engineering sense of, okay, what exactly is appropriate. But visual cues are very important. Close that. Come back to this one here. So how do we correct it? There's a number of ways to correct it. Probably the easiest one is that you can always just say, you can just start trying these randomly. Um, <laughs> it's really better when you're first coming into it. It may seem like you got to get the job done and you don't have the time, but you can see I'm looking for the right materials. What I provided is a bunch of class reference notes. And under the class reference notes, there's hourglass recommendations. And this came out of the LS Sinus Support website. And they have tons of good material. And here it talks about the various hourglass types. Stiffness based control is generally more effective than viscous control for structural parts. Okay, type 4. I like to reduce the H usually in the range of 0 0.0, 0 0.5, so as to minimize non-physical stiffening of the response. I remember as we discussed on hourglass, and it's, at, it's adding forces to correct it. So this is a structural part. Let's try it at 4. And we'll try the recommendation. I'll go on the high side at 0 0.05, like that. So at least I have a little idea of where I'm going with this. And I'll go File, Save As. And browse because I'm going to go up. I'm going to dump this into the finish right there. So yes, I do want to overwrite it. Then I'll just go ahead and minimize this. I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm going to the solver, start, browse. Go to the finish file folder, run. Normal termination, and I'll open up another session of LS prepost. Open LS Dino binary. I'm going to have to turn off my email for the next one. Finish, go, and let's just run it. Just our visual, we can see that and I'm going to go ahead, hit that button, and I'm going to contour the stresses again. And you can see that the stresses don't look so bad either. Uh, they're a little shaky, but but we're not really interested in looking at the stresses. What we're really interested on in this little model here is to proof out the hourglassing, and we can see that it's fine looking. Now if we go to the ASCII file, and it's actually listed ASCII, ASCII file, and GSAT has all the energy. We'll load it. And we know to hit internal energy, hold the control key down, and pick the hourglass energy, and plot. And this tells us uh, it's it's right where it should be, practically zero. Okay, that's it. Um, for extra credit, if you want to, you can go in and switch the element formulation on the model. And element formulation keyword manager. You go down to section, shell. You could switch this to 16 and rerun and see what happens. Now 16, you won't have any hourglassing and compare the results. Thank you very much. And that ends this workshop.